2018 Canadian National Championships. Tim Baghurst joined by Mitch Braley. We are joining a court E, which was on court F. So we've had players move over from court F to court E in order to be on the show court, which we're grateful for because now we can watch this match. It's 11 serving 10. Bousquet had the early lead. Lander you clawed his way back and has taken a one point lead. He is the favorite in this match. Mitch, uh, a little different dynamics having to move court in the middle of a game. Yeah, no, something you see a lot of. Obviously, we want to, the players themselves want to remain on schedule. That last match on here went a little bit late, but these players prepared for this that time slot. I believe it was uh, 3 o'clock central time to be on the court and playing. So they started there, moved over. Looks like we got this court ready to go. We got all the wet spots cleared up, so hopefully it plays clean, just like the court they were previously on. doesn't affect them too much, but uh, they're both you know, warmed up, playing well, and ready to go here. Wow. Bousquet doesn't like the call. I really like how Landy you ran up and took that early. It's a good idea. No, I mean, it was a forehand setup. If he, if he leaves it, he lets Bousquet get back in the center core positioning, more ready for that next shot. So smart cutoff from Landy you. Lander, you certainly the more experienced player. Bousquet was still a junior up to a couple of years ago. No. Not that time, slides to his right. And you can see the frustration on Bousquet's racket. Lander you from Alberta, Bousquet from Quebec. Lots of fans here from Quebec. They're pretty vocal. They're usually they have a, a large contingent at all these national events. They, uh, you know, they're very enthusiastic. They like to cheer on their players and see them do well. So it's fun to watch and brings a great atmosphere. In 13, what Bousquet wanted. Terrific young athlete, has lots of potential in racquetball. Uh, he's had a fantastic season here for sure. He's playing really well. This is the last time these two played, it was actually a couple of years ago at the Senior Nationals in Burlington, Ontario, where Landry took that in two games. But Bousquet has obviously improved a lot since then and should be a hotly contested match with Bousquet looking to get the upset and beat Landry for the first time in his career. Landry, you wanted the screen call, he didn't get it. very frustrated with himself he's pretty demonstrative when he plays yeah you can see he's uh, missed a few shots here now ones that he was making when he had that you know that he played fantastic doubles made it to the final uh, there on Tuesday he played really well so he's missing shots he's making which is obviously frustrating but uh, land you put a lot of pressure on him and, and forced him to make those mistakes 11 13.
Wow. Lander you. Different styles between these two players for sure. I mean, we have Landry, we've talked about it. He's a high percentage player, doesn't hit the ball. You know, as hard as some of these players in the draw, he's not known for being super fast, but he is agile, he has he is smart, and you have Bousquet who's young, likes to hit the ball a ton, very fast, so a lot of athleticism in both of them, but in different ways. And you have Landry's consistency, wins him a lot of matches. Well, it's Landry who takes the first game. We'll settle in for game number two. I don't know if you could hear, but Bousquet whacks his racket. He's, he's obviously annoyed with himself. Um, this is a case of where he needs to kind of understand that, that um, composure is important in these pressure matches. And just because things don't go your way the whole time, doesn't mean that you're out of the match. You've lost a game. Maybe you could have won that game, but you didn't, and it's okay. You've got another opportunity as opposed to I'm going to lose control and then just fall apart in game two. No, I mean, we've seen a lot of great comebacks uh, throughout the course of the week here, both in doubles and singles. Uh, you have to wonder, too, you watch Bousquet, and he's such a talented player. And when he plays matches against players that, um, you know, are lower seed than they know he can win, he doesn't usually play 100%. He doesn't get all cylinders firing. So, you know, I wonder if part of his loss in that first game there is he wasn't ready to play 100%, um, played with the best of his abilities. He doesn't play the match or, you know, play this entire week of racquetball playing as as hard as he can. So he comes into this match facing a tough opponent, Landry, who he has to play his best against, but he doesn't play that way in the week falling into this match, and you have to make sure you're peaking and using every match you can in early rounds to use as a stepping stone to play well in these quarterfinals, and hopefully for Bousquet, if he can squeeze out this match, uh, a semifinal or a, or a medal. Yeah, that's, that's a really uh, insightful thing to say. You know, uh, some players, as you said, they, they tend to get maybe a little bit sloppy on playing so-and-so. Oh, yeah, it won't be that hard. And so they don't really try to execute their shots the way they can. Or, flip side, they play relaxed, right? I, I, I've got this. I'm going to play relaxed and hit my shots. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a, a player like Lander Yu who's, who's pretty athletic. He, he plays a lot of squash is able to play a lot of defense. You can see him flip things to the ceiling and say, hey, take another shot, take another shot, take another shot. Bousquet then gets frustrated because he can't put the ball down. Well, he hasn't been playing like that all week. Now I have to. Suddenly it, it, it's a frustration. Absolutely. And, I mean, you look to your two. He's the lower seed, so if he wants to beat Landry, who has never lost to Bousquet before, Bousquet's going to have to take it to him. He's going to have to go and get this match. Landry is not going to give him mistakes. He's a consistent player. He's experienced. He's smart. So if Bousquet wants to have a shot here, he's got to play some solid racquetball, start making those shots, and uh, really, really clean it up here in this second game, down one game to zero. Better for Bousquet. Smooth from Landry. We saw that in the doubles match he played with his brother James. They don't make very many mistakes, although James, in our match before, we saw made some skips maybe we talked about fatigue coming in a, a factor but he's just a, a really solid player lander you yeah and he played the right side most of that tournament so you saw that was a right forehand pinch that he made all tournament and uh, i think the the doubles we played up before this was a key part of making that shot he's, he's warmed up there he's hit a ton of those already this tournament so hitting forehands and killing those ending those shots and singles is something he's done all week already on these courts
mean, hitting from Lander U. Back and forth we go at the start of game two. Better from Busque, three-shot rally. Hey, he started this this second game a little bit flat, but that's uh, a good way good way to get going here. It's just a clean down the line, get himself on the board. Look at how he ran over to his forehand to hit that. Looks like he slipped a little bit. We've mentioned this already. The courts are very warm today here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, but. Usually a sign that you're more comfortable hitting a forehand than your backhand when you run around like that to that side. Yeah, and he, he does that a lot. I think he's got a very compact pendulum swing, so for him to run around on that, he doesn't need a lot of space. He can be against the wall and still get a lot of power and hit a really quality shot, even though it's not the most conventional way to be shooting from the left side of the court using your forehand. Andrew, you really left up that pinch. And, and I mean, Bousquet here, he's down a game. He's got a little bit of, you know, confidence wavering. You have to think that he's has a little bit of doubt. You know, I've lost this first game. I've never beaten this guy before. And for Landry to give him those setups in the middle, it's the last thing he wants to be doing right now. Better from Lander U. A serve from Lander U down the right side. Watch his right foot come off as he drive serves. Completely comes off the floor. And clean hitting down the left side. Playing really well right now. Good saw a couple of points to respond back and take away that small lead Busque built up. Lander you a, a very experienced player in Canada and abroad. He is. There's not a lot of experiences that you know court situations score lines that he hasn't seen or faced so doesn't um doesn't get rattled by a lot of situations you just he's very calm steady and executes his game plan Wow, let's have a discussion, I think. So Mitch, I find this interesting that, that Landry is the one that's complaining when really Landry is the one who got the replay and probably you could argue an avoidable could be given. I think Landry got away with them there. I mean, Buske had like Landry, you argued the entire front wall. Lucky he got away with only a replay from Bousquet, who could have hit a shot on that left wall, and probably for a winner, didn't have to be that great. So uh, I think it all worked out in Landry's favor at the end of the day. You 
Can't give quality players opportunities up in the service box. Still two serving two. It's one of those decisions where next time Bousquet's going to swing, right? And and if Landry is there and Landry U gets hit, well, you know what? The, the referee didn't give the call, and so now the referee's putting the player in the position of you've got to swing if you want to get that ball, and maybe Landry U gets hit. And it's one of those really difficult decisions that a referee has to make. Absolutely. And like to think that, you know, if that situation comes again, Bousquet had probably 19 feet of the 20 that that front wall is to shoot at. So if he takes that open court, that left side, shouldn't be an issue, shouldn't be hitting anybody. But uh, you never know, these players hit a lot of shots. They just want to keep their opponents off balance. So we'll see if that similar situation comes up again here in this, in this match. Great get, Bousquet. Wow. The athleticism. Lander, you wants two bounces. I thought he got it. I thought he did too. I think it was just one of those heat of the moment. You think you made a great shot. You think it's two, and all of a sudden your opponent comes out of nowhere and gets it. So not too much argument from him. I think he knows it was a good get. He's just frustrated that it was such an incredible rally from Bousquet. Well, we hope you're enjoying this coverage of the Canadian National Championships. Just a reminder, we have more matches, a lot more matches, four more matches coming up today if we can stay on schedule. Uh, this is a 3 p.m. match, and we're only at the beginning of game two, so stay with us. We hope you enjoy this coverage. It's We've got two more women's singles and two more men's singles coming up after this. Makes it look so easy sometimes, Bousquet. Looks so casual. So smooth, especially on that backhand side. He doesn't need a lot. He just seems to you know, just almost flick through the ball, and there's so much power there. Great shot. A little lucky from Bousquet. Miss hit that pinch. He'll take it. Let me turn up the mic. Let's see if we can hear. Sorry about that. That was loud. Well, I don't know if you could hear that. Lander Yu was asking for a screen. The ball's coming close to him every time. What's your take? I think it looks, I mean, it's, it's racquetball. The ball's close to everybody all the time, pretty much. It is. I mean, Bousquet is known for that serve where it is fairly tight to him, but I, I don't see a screen there. I think it's close, and it's part of the reason he does it is because it gets in his opponent's head. They're thinking it's a screen, but they're not getting the call on it. So it's, it's just a great serve, and uh, something Landry has to just overcome, get out of his mind, stop thinking about the referee and the calls he's making, and just focus on hitting a good return. Indeed. Well, Landry, you're very experienced, and you wonder how much of that is just Trying to maybe work the referee a little bit, slow things down, get the, get you know Bousquet out of uh, his rhythm. Wow, a point given. I think what uh, so here's <laughs> here's that you know Landry, you doing that little chat with Halco, and then all of a sudden he gets a point because of that complaining that the ball's passing too near Bousquet. Yeah, you have to wonder if his. You know, his argument, his experience, having that conversation with the referee led to any sort of, uh, you know, back of John Hawkins' mind. Yeah, maybe it is Maybe it is tight to his body. Maybe I should be given the call in favor of Lander U.
Oh my goodness. Wow. You don't see athleticism any better than that in racquetball. No, and it's, it's rare to see Landry you dive. He's really not, uh, he'll, he'll be the first one to say it. he doesn't like to dive. He doesn't do it a lot, but uh, when he does it, it's usually a fantastic get that he know it's uh, an important match for him. So great get from, from both players, great rally and way to finish it from Bousquet. Wait, let's take a look at the schedule. This is the plan. Women's singles coming up two in a row after this, followed by two men's singles quarterfinals. The women's are semifinals. Skip from Landry U. A free point for Bousquet. And just to give a bit of perspective on this match, Tim, I was actually speaking with Kobe Awasa uh, last night about the point qualifying. And so because him and Samuel Murray won the doubles, they've actually double qualified for the Canadian national team. So should Tim Landry U lose this match and Kobe Awasa progress to the next round or in his quarterfinal, Tim Landry will be of knocked out of the, not the national team, but the, the carding that he could get. There's only two cards given to the male athletes here. So one looks like it'll be given to Samuel, one to Kobe, if Tim Landry were to lose this match here. So there's a lot at stake here for Tim to win this match with Nicholas Bousquet. Another skip from Landry Yu. We'll talk about that carding thing uh, when we get a break. But a few points for Bousquet right now. I saw Lander you this morning downstairs in the gym of the hotel, getting a little sweat on, as he said. It was interesting to see him doing that, you know, four hours before his match. Let's go, man! No, he, he definitely wants to win this one. There's uh, so much riding on it, but again, we talked about his experience, so you know, whether it's a chance to make the national team or just to get a medal, he's, he's been in that situation before, so he's calm, he's gonna execute his shots, he's not gonna let the pressure of the moment get to him. Well, let's go back to that carding. You said that there's two cards available. What does that actually mean? So to be a carded athlete in Canada, uh, in racquetball terms, uh, two men and two women are eligible for carding with the points they're gonna get in the points at the selection events in the nationals here. So to be a carded athlete means that um, you had, uh, I believe it's, as I was said, it's $10,000 of untaxed money you get. So that can go towards training, you know, your nutrition, going to tournaments, which is, you know, huge. You have it just for your performance in these athletic tournaments. Uh, you get access to different sort of trading resources, uh, puts you on the national team. So I believe only every second year is a carding year. We haven't been in one right now. So, um, like we said earlier, if, Tim Landry loses this match, and Kobe Awasa wins his quarterfinal. Tim Landry loses his opportunity to have that carding, have that those funds and those resources available to him. So it's not just a point or an opportunity to medal in this match. It's you know those funds, those resources, that carding that is uh, on the line for him right now. So Landry currently has a card. It, you get it for two years and this is the point in which you, it's, it's renewed basically and... Uh, he, do, he doesn't have a card right now, it's gonna depend on the results of this tournament. Okay. Well, looks like there's more discussion. Landry, you doesn't like it. It's very loud out here now with everybody watching this. Eight serving three. Oh my goodness, Lander, you hit himself. Just seems to have lost composure in this second game a little bit. Nine, two, three. 
and I think that one there he tried to be a bit too a bit too fancy. He had a setup in the front court. It wasn't an easy shot to kill. It was flying off the back ball, but uh, obviously the wrong decision hitting it back at himself. Well, that time he gets a side out. My apologies. <laughs> We had the score backwards. Busque frustrated with himself. The carding is also based not just on this tournament, but selection events throughout the year. That is correct, yeah. I believe, Lander, you finished second in both of our selection events. You had Murray, obviously, won both of them. Uh, I'm trying to recall, I believe, and I think Iwasa finished third, respectively. Now, I, I wish I knew the, the point breakdown a little bit better, but as far as I know, when I talked to Iwasa last night, it just depends on the results of his quarterfinal and this quarterfinal with Landry right now. If Landry loses, I lost advances. Landry has no opportunity to get that card. So what does the double qualifying mean exactly? So I, I know we discussed it earlier in the week, so a uh, bit of humility on my part, I was wrong when I talked about some of the points. So because Murray and uh, Iwasa won the doubles championships, we talked about how we send four men to the world championships or women, but uh, usually it ends up being two singles players and then one doubles team, which makes up the four players. Uh, by double qualifying, Awasa and Murray now have the opportunity by winning the uh, gold medal in the doubles to play both the doubles as a doubles team at the Worlds and play the singles, um, bo be both singles players. So they would basically fill the roles of four people between the two of them. Wow, a ripping backhand winner. There was a situation where it looked like Lander U was screened again with the ball coming down the line. That time he didn't appeal anything, and Bousquet ripped it for a winner. I think, I think he's frustrated. He knows he's not going to get the call. I am actually quite surprised we didn't have line judges in the first quarterfinal. We don't have them again here. If things get a little bit tighter, I could see going into a tiebreaker if that does happen, uh, having you know, land or you, maybe Bousquet asked for linesmen just to have another couple sets of eyes on this and make sure the calls are as accurate as they can be. Bousquet went for the pinch. He points over to the left wall, knowing he should have gone down the, had gone down the line. Just uh, one of those things where land you has to make a decision, take a guess, and he guessed right. Powerful hitter, Bousquet. But looks like Landry doesn't... Oh, my mistake. I thought he was walking up to take the ball, thinking the ball skipped, but I think just checking to see if it was broken had a bit of a funny sound. I think he just took it off his frame. They're digging it off the wall. Wow. You saw Landry, you go left. Bousquet went right. That's a point. We're heading towards a tiebreaker. That's where that screen serve, or in Landry's mind, screen serve has become effective. Now he's looking left. He knows he has to be sharp to hit it, and then he sneaks one into the right. There we go, that's it!
just not putting the ball down. Landry, you had the opportunity. And that's his, I mean, that is Tim Landry who shot that backhand pinch. That's his favorite shot. You'll ask him, he'll, he'll tell you that. So for him to miss it is uncharacteristic, but it's a big point. A lot of pressure. And a ripping winner from Bousquet. Suddenly it's 15-6. And suddenly we're going to a tiebreaker. We're going to take a couple minutes to regroup. And we hope you stick with us and enjoy this coverage of the 2018 National Championships. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. A tiebreaker, what we like as a fan. First to 11, you're in Canada, win by two. How about that for a start, Bousquet? Carrying off that momentum at the end of game two. And I think he's gonna be a bit of a high here. I don't think he's ever taken a game off Landy in a tournament before. So I mean, that in itself is huge and you have to think if that's affecting Landy at all knowing. You know, he, he finally you know, broke through that hole. He's playing tough, and now he's nine points away from potentially losing this match and everything riding on it. And it's important for him to be in this position and just focus on the next point rather than I'm nine points away from beating somebody I never beat. Absolutely it is. He's hitting really clean right now. Until then. That's a great shot. He just seems to be playing within himself. I met Bousquet first back in 2015 at the Dominican Republic Junior World Championships. He goes down as being the longest match I ever refereed. Twelve-ten tiebreaker, eleven-ten tiebreaker international rules with him. I don't remember. I just remember it was hot, and I wanted it to be over. <laughs> I don't even remember who won. Point for Lander. You. 
Very experienced. He's been here many times before. Well, I don't know what Bousquet wants. But he's not going to complain about it. It's a great shot from his shoulders, 39 feet. All he had to do was hit the front wall. A little too casual at that one. Even for Bousquet, who normally looks very smooth and, and casual. Looks like Landry you was looking over to somebody to to our right. We can't see. There's no room really in front of us to see even the court. I think it's his coach, Lauren Prentice, over in that right corner. Let's go, go Another point for Bousquet, climbing to this win one point at a time, looking to get into the semifinals. We really saw him in doubles earlier this week. Just take over matches. It was incredible. Oh, he played unbelievable. Um, so I'm not surprised he's uh, been more than a handful for number th three seed Tim Landier. He's playing some fantastic ball and played some, a great doubles tournament. Well, the frustration there from Landier, who hit himself again. This time it was very close to the front wall. I thought Bousquet was going to ask for a hinder, but he played through it and earns a point for it. Well, look at Landry. You, you knew that he was going to have that expression, and you knew that Halko was going to call a, a replay in that situation. And again, this is why I'm surprised we don't have linesmen for calls like this. Hold on. So basically, well, Landry is not happy with this. And he, he had a valid point, which was, if he was in my way, as you claimed, why was it not an avoidable? Yeah, I mean, it, I, I thought it was an avoidable myself, too. I'm a bit surprised if it was only a replay, but again, he's just going to have to battle through it. Bousquet really hitting clean from the middle of the court. Landry with some tough defense. Puts the ball down. Flat winner from Bousquet. A 
That's unlucky for Bousquet. Came off the back wall awkwardly. Two serving five. No room around us. Fans watching from our screen who can't see the main court. Skip from Bousquet. Three, three, five. You get the feeling that if he can just play clean, he's hitting harder, he's hitting um, more accurately than Lander Yu. Lander Yu playing a lot of defense. As long as he can avoid making mistakes, he can he can claim this. But again, you see that really loose. Four, three, five. I mean, he's been the better player since the last part of that second game here. Uh, he's still up by a point. He's only made a couple of mistakes here, so I'd have to agree. He only needs six points away, six solid points away from taking this tiebreaker and getting into his first national semifinal. That was nice to see Bousquet calling two on himself. Lando, you a little glance back at the official. All square at 5-5. Five, five. Hats off to Bousquet for... You know, the importance of this match and still giving away that point, being honest. Another wild shot from Bousquet. And it seems to be the return of serve he's struggling with right now. A point for Lander Yu. Suddenly, Lander Yu finds himself five points away from a semifinal. And we've seen this from Lander Yu, you know, Event in event out every single year. He looks down, but he finds a way to dig in, stay consistent, and uh, and you know, get up and give himself momentum in these tough matches. He he never goes out without a fight. Timeout, Bousquet. Probably wise to take one at this point. I think so. I mean, he was dominating the beginning of this tiebreaker. I think he needs to just find his focus again. Landry's made some some good serves, so he needs to find a return serve first of all. Get back in the box and uh, play the way he was at the beginning of this tiebreaker, serving really tough, maybe sneak a couple into that forehand where he gets that free point and <coughs> hopefully sneak out a couple points here and regain the lead. Well, one of the things that I've noticed about Bousquet is his maybe unwillingness to go to the ceiling. He plays very aggressively and it's kind of a, it either works or it doesn't. And we saw the last few minutes where it's not working because he's just going flat out. Maybe he needs to just put one to the ceiling on that return of serve and get Lander Yu into the deep backcourt. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a double-edged sword for him. Yeah, he, he gets hot like he did um, up until he just lost the lead here where he makes some fantastic shots and puts a lot of pressure on. But, um, you know, again, he's got to just find a way to change something up, just hit a good return, even though Lander Yu is tough off the back wall. Hit a good ceiling ball in the corner. Don't let it come off the back. And hopefully work your way into a rally here. Don't start off on the wrong foot. Just a reminder quickly, more matches coming up. Two women's singles, followed by the other two men's quarterfinals. Hope you stick around for those. Two hours and 30 minutes into this stream today, and we're only in game number two, or match number two. Wow. Wow. Look at the expression from Lander Yu. It looked good from here, I have to say. I agree, no, I thought it was a crack case as well. Great pickup, Bousquet. Oh, wow. You got to credit his defense. He just stayed in the point. It was ugly. He was just keeping the ball alive. Eventually took his chance. And we've seen that uh, all throughout the week. You're just staying in the rally. It doesn't have to be great shots. It's all you can do is just to get your racket on the ball. But sometimes you get that lucky mistake from your opponent and you end up winning the rally just for working tough and staying in it.
Really great close tiebreaker back and forth. For a fan, this is really what we want to see. Oh, it's been uh, that first quarterfinal we had with Casper Landry. James Landry, younger brother of Tim, was great. And this one here hasn't disappointed at all. A serve from Bousquet. Two rallies won since that timeout. Loves his pinches, Bousquet. He's really lethal once he gets past the encroachment line. Yeah, he, uh, and like you said, he loves to pinch, but even if you're reading it, he's so good at hitting it that you could be standing right there, but he's gonna roll that out more often than not. To the ceiling, Bousquet, that's rare. And a big skip from the seated number six. You wonder whether there's a little bit of nervousness coming into this play. It's tough. Every every point you get closer to that eleven makes it seem even tougher. It creeps in your mind, thinking this is first first semifinal for him, first time beating Tim Landyu. I mean, there's just so much riding on it that it's tough to block it out of your mind and just play the point at hand. Is that serve coming up? Two skips in a row. Really, it was a good return. Got him that opportunity, and he just he just skipped it. That's that's almost routine for him. Yeah, he's been making those all tiebreak here. So if we just talked about the pressure. Wonder if that's starting to seep in here. And a point for Lander. You eight serving seven. Three mistakes in a row from Bousquet. I like this from Bousquet, just slowing it down, showing some composure. So, nine serving seven. Might be a good timeout for Bousquet. Two points away, you've lost four, four rallies in a row. The momentum has clearly shifted in favor of Lander Yu. Last time Bousquet took his timeout, he got a couple points. So it's probably a wise decision. Probably, I think there's a lot of times where before you take your timeout, you almost want to win the rally, just get back in the service box knowing you're gonna be serving when you take that timeout. Obviously, he's only got, you know, it's 9 7. Lander used two points away from winning this, so he doesn't have a lot of opportunity to, you know, make a mistake and wait till he gets in the box. He has to take it now, get back in the box, and hopefully score a couple of quick points here to tie it up and, and put some pressure on Lander. He's been really comfortable these last few points here. Mitch, you talked about the experience of Lander U and just how he's been here before, and, and you saw it earlier in this tiebreaker he was down now he just seems very playing within himself not doing too much and Bousquet is the one who's making the errors yeah we, we've seen him play today the whole match he's never really gone away from his game plan he hasn't been going for shots that are low percentage above his shoulders he's played steady the whole match and even though he was down there he knew that you know if he keeps playing the way he knows he can and making the shots and sticking to his game plan He's going to be in good shape to win this match. And he's up 9-7 here. He's a couple points away from winning the match. And uh, I don't see him doing anything differently in these last couple points to hopefully close this out and find himself a spot in the semifinals. Well, let's see if he can close it out. Base serve from Lander Yu. Look at the emotion on his face now. Comes up with match point. Ten serving seven. Can he close it out? Lander 
Alexander, you wanted it. He didn't get it. It'll be a second serve. shot and you can see what that meant to him lander you wins it in a tiebreaker 11 7 mitch great great match and even though lander you claws this one out you have to say there's futures bright for bousquet oh definitely i mean every year that like i said they haven't played for two years where lander you beat him in a fairly fairly steady you know two games but you know two years later here we are close tiebreaker bousquet played great you know, uh, you have to think he's only going to keep getting better and improving and keep pushing Landry. You and, you know, he's going to break through one day for sure. It's, and it's going to be, you know, sooner, sooner than later. So a lot of positives to bring away from young player Bousquet. Well, we hope you enjoyed this coverage. Of course, we have many more matches coming up. But due to the length of these first two matches, we're going to reset the stream. And we'll be back with you in about 10 minutes. We hope you stick with us for these 2018 Canadian National Championships.